Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel and welcome again to another painting tutorial! It's Saturday today in Manila and I decided to paint a different type of subject. I don't usually do this. I think the last time I did a similar painting, uh, a painting similar to this one was I think maybe three years ago. So that was quite a long time ago. So I really don't know how this will turn out. But I'm just so excited because we will only be using a few colors today, like super, super few. <laughs> we have titanium white, burnt sienna, red, black, and lemon yellow. I don't know if you find that few, but to me, it's quite few, <laughs> all right? So let me background first my canvas. I'm using a 10 by 14 inches canvas board. So I'm gonna background this first. And in fact, I already, I mean, I have beside me my hair dryer so that uh, if the background dries pretty slow, I can dry it pretty fast. Uh, so that we don't waste time. So for the background, I'll be using a little bit of grayish, brownish color. So for that, I'll be getting my black and white. It should be on the dark side. Hmm. The dark side. All right. And I'll be adding a little bit of burnt sienna to that so that it's not super duper black. There's some sort of grayish brown color. Maybe this color, and I'm gonna use this one to background my canvas board. Again, I'm just mixing black, white, and brown to get this grayish, brownish background color. You can actually use just black, but um, I think black is too dark for this background. So I'm just gonna use, a, okay, that's too dark. Does the background color matter? Well, sometimes. Sometimes it does not. If the background color uh, serves as the clue as to the setting of the subject, then the background color matters. But if the background color only serves as a mere uh, like a decoration or it only adds mood to the painting you can change it if you want a happy or sad mood it depends on you but if the background color serves as the source of light or uh, it serves as uh, a guide to the viewers to know the setting of the subject then the background color is important right I actually taped my back my canvas board on the surface so that it doesn't move as I do the painting all right that's good but the tape would come off okay so I think this is nice but just to be sure I want the background to be super dry so that we can layer over it without um, picking the background paints as we do the sketch. I hope that made sense. <laughs> so I'm gonna use my hair dryer just to uh, dry things pretty quickly. Right, 
I think that will do. So as you have seen in the thumbnail of this video and on my post, um, we will be doing a lemon, a lemon uh, painting with some water droplets and splashes. So here we go. I'll be sketching it and I'll be using my lemon yellow. So I'll be getting a more pointy brush so that we get that sketch um, nice and defined. So I'll be getting my yellow. You can actually use titanium white. It doesn't really matter. This is just a sketch, but I just chose something that I can see. I mean, something that will allow you to see the sketch because you're the one following it or watching it. So let me sketch first the subject. So the fruit will be right here on the left side because we'll be doing some splashes on the right side. It's just um, nice and um, unique, I think. Again, this is just a sketch so if I want to change something later I will if I want to Okay, I'll be getting my white. Mm, I just want to identify if this is gonna work. Okay, so it's like that. I'll be painting over this. I'm just trying to do some uh, like pizza slices. <laughs> We're not doing a pizza. I'm just telling you that for measuring purposes. All right, good. All right. So the water splashes will be here or the lemon squeeze. The lemon juice will be all over the canvas later. For now, this will be the sketch. Okay, so as I told you, I'll be painting over that. It's just my way of identifying where things are going to go. So for the color or the background color of the lemon, I'll be using, of course, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red to create that orange color. I'll be adding a little bit of burnt sienna. Excuse my my can my paint here it's pretty dry i'm using an old um what do you call this old palette before i do some new ones or get some new paints from the tube all right so as you can see here i'm starting right away This is the underpainting, by the way. For the underpainting, you can also use some yellow ochre because uh, that, I think that's a good color as well for the underpainting. So that my canvas won't move.
All right. Again, this is just the underpainting. Nothing um, detailed here at the moment. As, and as you can see, the way I'm doing my brush strokes, very, very raw. And there's no particular pattern. Although, um, we're trying to follow as well the direction of each slices is towards the center as you can see here although my brush strokes are quite raw i'm still doing it towards the center all right i'm getting my white okay without washing my brush you don't need to wash your brush all the time you pick up a new color because when we're doing realism uh, each part is connected to I mean, one part is connected to another part, which makes the whole picture one, okay? So you don't have to have, we don't have to wash it every single time. So I'm gonna use this white again, without washing my brush. I'm just gonna make some patterns. You know that white spots that we see on lemons and even oranges. Okay, I'm just gonna add water when you feel that the paint is drying pretty quickly. will be a little thicker because as you know the skin of the lemon quite thick right so I'm gonna make it a little thick you can even add a little bit of orangey color but that would be later for now let's just stick to this Just go around. All right. Just like that. Okay. And okay, just like that. I'm gonna allow this first to dry before we move on to the next step. Okay, actually my canvas is moving. I don't want it to move so that you don't get dizzy. I'm gonna get um, I'm gonna get a wider brush because that one is quite pointy. I'm gonna get my burnt sienna, maybe a little bit of red and a little bit of black. This will serve as the underpainting for the skin. I know that it's not really the color, but as I told you, this is the underpainting, which is usually a shade or two uh, darker than the actual color. But because of the absence of light down here, it will be really, really dark. Okay, so this will be the color for this. Still wet. We're trying to remove as well the sketch lines that we already that we did when we identify the shape of this uh, lemon. And I'm gonna go around, okay, I'm gonna go around just to outline it. Just like that. Again, that was the underpainting. Okay, now I'm gonna use my black. 
So get your black. And while the paint is still wet right here, I'm just gonna create some dark spots. Again, we're doing the dark spots not because the lemon is or has a lot of spots or not fresh anymore or rotten but because of the absence of light down here all the light will be coming or will be uh, shown on the front side of this lemon I said front side why did I say that front side meaning this part I'll be getting the yellow, orange color. Okay, okay I need more yellow. We'll be lightening this later. Again, street noise when I'm painting. It happens every time I'm doing a tutorial. All right. Anyway, okay, I'll be using the same color to go back to some areas okay. you know what I really really like about painting nature or painting natural subjects is the absence of symmetry and perfection that's what i like about perf uh, painting natural objects and subjects okay of course i'm using my hand <laughs> directly on the canvas so i'm just adding some dark orangey color here and there because this will serve as or the contrast will give us dimension when we do the lighter colors later when it's beside the yellow color all right wash your brush out now we'll be using our pure yellow so just get your yellow and i want you to apply that yellow directly I know that most yellow are translucent but just apply this, this color we'll uh, we'll fix everything later And notice as well the way I'm applying it. It's quite going in different directions. That's because we, we want to achieve that fruity um, patterns.
Okay, I'm getting my white. And some gray color. Here, on the middle section. And then using that gray color, let's create some patterns. I will be using, or I'm using now, the, just the tip of my brush. Be very gentle and just allow the, the tip of the brush to touch on the canvas without uh, guiding it too much. Just uh, allow where it wants to go. Okay, I'll be mixing my white and yellow so that I create that light yellow color. And of course, I'm always using my hands to give more natural effects. I really don't rely too much on my, my brush or my brushes when I want to achieve a certain effect. I really use my hands. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of orange. You know, this is the most challenging part for me when I create my orange because my red does not match it, my red color. So I'm just gonna use yellow and burnt sienna create that oh maybe not like maybe there you go like burnt sienna plus yellow Okay, using some more burnt sienna. And yellow, I'm just gonna combine the two colors just to give it more dimension. I'm gonna spread a little bit of brownie color along this white patterns 
that rings the lemon to make it look more natural. Right, just like that. Let me check. Okay. I'm gonna get my pure white. Using pure white, I'm gonna go back to this portion. I'm gonna go and add some white spots randomly. You don't want to overdo this. Just add a little bit of white spots here and there. Okay, just like that. Okay. I'm gonna get a more pointy brush. I'm gonna get my black. Again, I'm just gonna go around this area to outline or re-outline. Uh, I mean, re-outline the shape. Adding some burnt sienna here and there. Okay. And now I'm doing some yellow colors. Oh my gosh, so noisy. You can hear it, right? Now I don't know what um what's that sound or is that an ambulance or police? For the splashes, we're going to do a lot of random abstract background for this. this one
Now let's start doing some splashes. Again, this will be ran. This will be more of an abstract uh, style. So I'm getting my black. Okay. You probably uh, would say that oh, it does not make sense, but trust me on this one. There will be lots and lots of abstract things going on here. So just you just have to trust me. I love painting water splashes, by the way. If you haven't seen my paintings of water splashes, you can check them out on my Instagram or Facebook. So we'll start with this. Now I'm getting my white, okay? And I'll be using the same pointy brush. some dots Okay, I'll be doing some gray color with some browns and let's add some of that color. And yellow. You know, as the water splashes or as the juice splashes, 
all over the place it creates some refraction of the image and that includes the the main subject which is the lemon here that we have so we will do some refraction right here Refraction is the distortion of the object because of uh, the light. Refraction of the image of the object because of the light. Okay, The object does not really distort itself, but just the image of it gets distorted okay, because of the light. So that and a little bit of here, up here. So a little bit of extra peeling right here. Okay, so I'm just Okay, I'm just adding some more thickness to the skin. Okay, I'm adding some black. Colors. Okay. Now 
I'll be adding some dark browns right under here. getting my black because we're trying to create a distorted image right Some white here and there. Okay. So if you're hearing some noise, um, those are my unit neighbors. Okay, I'm getting some black. Yeah, I can hear them talk up to here. Why are they so noisy? Let me check all right so we will be adding more details later I'll be getting some gray I'll be using this gray to apply on certain areas. We kind of want to gray some areas. gonna gray this side by graying it we're suggesting that there is some it's wet okay it's not dry at all some white
Getting some yellow browns. right under this. So I'm getting some watered down yellow and I'm trying to apply it quite randomly on the lemon. And I'm gonna make some splashes, yeah, just like that. You don't need a toothbrush for this. You know, some artists do the toothbrush thing. <laughs> you don't need to have that. Check. I'm going to add more highlights. Some more refractions.
I'm gonna lighten this part. Using some yellow. Just gonna lighten the sides. And here, since we're doing refraction, we're gonna spread some yellow here as if the image got distorted right here. Some more white markings. Also some brown markings. I'm doing some watered down gray here and there, very random. It's like what we've been doing for a lot of patterns here, very random markings. Let me check that. All right, good. I think I'll be using my hair dryer just to make things quite, uh, or just to dry things quite quicker.
just gonna make some water splashes right here right there Now I'll be using my hair dryer. Okay. That's good. All right. <laughs> good. Now I'll be glazing over our painting because we want the subject to be whole. Okay. I'll be using my yellow to glaze it. So I'll be dabbing on to my pure yellow and I'm just gonna glaze it with this color. We want it to be whole. Okay. Okay. I'll be getting my white. A little bit of glazing of white here and there. Okay. Only highlight certain parts. You don't want to overdo this.
just gonna go around this droplet A lot of techniques were actually applied here. Fractions. As you can see here, I'm trying to do as much, I mean, as many detailing as possible because we're only doing one subject and there's not so much of uh, information about this subject. So we're trying to focus more on the details. Okay, wow, this is nice. My paintbrush just jumped. It has its own life. Oh my gosh.
I'm trying to gray this area because this area is um, the water splashes or the juices splashes. So we want to make sure that it looks liquidy by graying it. Okay, it's just a technique. Trying to gray it. Okay. By graying it or by softening it, okay, we achieve that watery effect. Also applying some watered down yellow. I think this is really nice. Okay, again, water down yellow and apply it quite randomly. I'm not trying to spread the paint. I'm just tapping it. Just like that. And I think I'm ready to sign this now because yeah, I think it's all good or maybe not. I'm just gonna highlight even more. And I think this is done. I think this is done. Or maybe not. Right, I'm obsessed. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to sign this now. And of course, we're going to sign right here because this is not uh, used so much. So I'm going to use my white and sign right here. Okay, we're, we're done, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this one. It is quite different from the usual ones that I do, usually landscapes or flowers or maybe um, another form of still life. But this is also still life, only that it's a different one because we're using, uh, or we chose a subject that is not very usual to me. So I hope you enjoyed this one. And I hope you paint along with me. By the way, let me just add a little more gray color because I'm trying to really make it look liquidy. So I'm going to make it more liquidy. All right. 
So yeah, as I was saying, I hope you enjoyed this one. And if you're painting along with me, let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, if you find it interesting, let me know in the comment section below. And you, if you've painted along with me in the past, let me know as well on my social media accounts so that, you know, some sometimes I share them on my own social media so that other people can see them, that you worked and you painted along with me, if you're okay with that. So see you in my next video. Bye, guys. Mm-hmm.